Assessing pelvic floor muscle tone using digital palpation in women with provoked vestibulodynia. Association and comparison with dynamometry and ultrasound imaging. We received funding from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and the Ordre Professionnel de la Physiothérapie du Québec. Bovidinia is a frequent chronic pain condition with a prevalence ranging from 7 to 16 percent. The most common subtype, provoked vestibulodynia, known as PVD, has been associated with heightened pelvic floor muscle tone. Pelvic floor muscle tone is routinely assessed by pelvic floor physical therapists throughout the evaluation and treatment period using digital palpation, even though this method has never been validated against objective measures such as dynamometry and ultrasound. The aim of this study was to assess the validity of digital palpation in assessing tone by firstly examining the association of palpation scores with dynamometry and 3D, 4D transperineal ultrasound imaging, and secondly by evaluating whether the palpation grade scale can be discriminated against dynamometry and ultrasound imaging in women with PVD. For this cross-sectional study, we recruited 208 nulliparous women who had a diagnosis of PVD and experienced greater than 5 on 10 pain during intercourse for a minimum of 6 months. Pelvic floor muscle tone was assessed intravaginally with one finger using the rising scale. The physiotherapist palpated the levator ani towards the posterior fourchette and designated a score between minus three and plus three. Tone was measured with a dynamometric speculum at a vaginal aperture of 15 millimeters. Flexibility was assessed as the maximum tolerated vaginal aperture while separating the two speculum branches. Pelvic floor muscle morphometry was assessed using transperineal 3D, 4D ultrasound, and the levator hiatus area was measured at rest. And now our results. Regarding the association between the rising scale and dynamometry, a weak association was found between palpation scores and tone, and a fair association between palpation scores and flexibility. For the association between palpation and ultrasound imaging, a weak association was found between palpation scores and the levator hiatus area. When evaluating whether the palpation scores can be discriminated against dynamometry and ultrasound imaging, we found that there was a significant difference between tone measured with the dynamometer at palpation scores 0 to 3, 1 to 3, and two to three. In other words, adjacent palpation scores could not be consistently discriminated. Similar results were found for flexibility measured with a dynamometer. The flexibility values were significantly different for palpation scores zero to one, zero to two, zero to three, and one to three. For ultrasound, the levator hiatus area differed only for scores 0 to 3. Although mean values of dynamometry and ultrasound imaging changed across subsequent palpation scores, they did not consistently differ between adjacent scales. In conclusion, findings of this study showed that pelvic floor muscle tone assessed with digital palpation was weakly or fairly associated with dynamometry and ultrasound imaging. Our results also showed limited ability of the physiotherapist to discriminate between palpation scores against dynamometry and ultrasound measures. Therefore, it is important to understand that although palpation is easy, inexpensive, and widely used, it is subject to overlap in adjacent or closely related scores. For that reason, changes in muscle tone may not be captured by digital palpation. The study suggests that assessors, clinicians, and researchers should be conscious of these limitations when relying solely on digital palpation as an assessment and outcome measure tool. Thank you very much.